Hi everybody. Today we're going to look at the concept of manner of articulation in sonorant consonants. In our last video, we talked about manner of articulation in obstruents. Remember, the term manner refers to the kind of constriction that we make when we make a consonant sound. And for the purposes of reviewing where we've been, let's also remember that the obstruent sounds are made up of three kinds of manners of articulation. Stop sounds are obstruents that are characterized by a complete blocking of the flow of air in the oral cavity. Fricatives are made with a constriction that allows a small amount of air to get through, but which generates turbulence at the point of constriction. And affricates are a kind of hybrid sound. They begin like stops, but they end like fricatives. I guess I'm kind of an affricate, or at least my name is. The first sound in my name, chip, is an affricate sound. Okay, let's turn our attention to the focus of today's video, the sonorant consonants. Sonorant consonants are made with less constriction than obstruents. A useful way to think about this is to visualize consonants as lying on a continuum running from the most constricted to the least constricted consonants. We can imagine, for example, a continuum that runs from consonant sounds to vowel sounds. We can think of the obstruents as occupying one end of the continuum, the most constricted end for consonants. Now between the obstruents and the vowels, that's where the sonorants live. As with the obstruents, there are different classes of sonorant sounds. We'll start here with the nasals. Nasal consonants are sometimes also called nasal stops. This is because when we make them, we make the same kind of constriction in the oral cavity that we make for oral stops. In other words, we make the same oral constriction for the nasal M as we do for the oral stops P and B. They're all bilabial, and all three completely block the flow of air at the lips. What makes nasals different from oral stops is that when we produce nasal sounds, we allow air to escape through our nose. So here's a picture of what's going on when we make a nasal consonant. In this case, we're looking at the production of the nasal sound N. There are two important things to notice in this picture. The first is that the tongue makes a complete constriction at the alveolar ridge. So in the oral sense, this sound is a stop. The second is that we can clearly see that during the articulation of the N sound, the velum is lowered, allowing air to pass into the nasal cavity and out the nose. The key difference between an oral stop and a nasal stop can be seen clearly if we put pictures of each side by side for comparison. Here we see an N on the left and a T on the right. While both require the same alveolar constriction in the mouth, we can see that the velum is lowered for N, allowing air to pass into the nasal cavity, while the velum is closed, that is the velum is raised for T, preventing air from passing into the nasal cavity. English has three nasal stop phonemes. We've got a bilabial nasal M, we've got an alveolar nasal N, and we've got a velar nasal, which we call engma. The IPA symbol is given here. Engma is the last sound in words like sang. Let's turn now to a class of sounds that linguists refer to as approximants. Approximants get their name from the approximation of two articulators that form a constriction that isn't quite close enough to generate turbulence of the kind that we find for fricatives. We'll discuss two classes of approximants here, the first of which are known as liquids. Liquids come in two flavors, laterals and rhotics. Both of these are probably unfamiliar terms, but don't be intimidated. For our purposes, think of laterals as L sounds and rhotics as R sounds. What does it mean for a sound to be a lateral sound? Well, the answer lies in the word lateral, because when we make lateral sounds, we allow air to flow down one or both sides of our tongue. Here's a look at the lateral consonant in English. 
we make a constriction with the tongue blade at the alveolar ridge. But as we can see in the front view, we position the tongue in order to allow air to flow down either side. English has one lateral phoneme, L. It's an alveolar lateral that we sometimes also call an alveolar lateral approximant. The other liquid consonant that we have in English is what most people refer to as the R sound. R sounds, which are also called rhotics in linguistics, are actually quite complicated and they vary a lot in the way that they're produced across different languages. For the purposes of this video, we're going to keep it simple. And by simple, I mean that we'll limit our attention to the R sound that we hear in American English, as opposed to doing a deep dive into the many R sounds across the world's languages. The R in American English is what's called a retroflex sound. Retro what? Retroflex. We make retroflex sounds by curling our tongue tip up and back. Our retroflex R is made by curling the tongue tip back towards the hard palate. And if you think about how you make an R sound, you'll probably also notice that you're rounding your lips at the same time. The R in American English can be described as a palatal retroflex or a palatal retroflex approximant. Here's its IPA symbol. It's an upside down R with a rightward pointing tail. We've now arrived at the glides, the last stop on our manner of articulation journey. Glides are also sometimes called semivowels, and English has two of them. The first is what people think of as the Y sound in words like yes, and the second is the W sound at the beginning of words like winning. The sound that most people think of as the Y sound in English is actually a palatal glide. The way that we produce it is by raising the body of the tongue towards the hard palate. The phonetic symbol for the palatal glide is the J. Here's how we make the sound that we think of as W. There's two things going on when we make a W. First, the back of the tongue is raised towards the velum. Second, we round our lips. This all means that what W is is a labiovelar glide. Its place is labiovelar, and its manner is that it's a glide. So remember one thing about glides. They're the least constricted of all the consonant sounds. In fact, they're made with so little constriction that they're actually called semi-vowels, and their articulation is very vowel-like. In this presentation, I've introduced you to the notion of manner of articulation in sonorant consonants using English sonorants as examples. Sometimes the terminology can feel overwhelming when you first start learning phonetics. So let's put them all back together on our continuum, the one we started the presentation with. On the left end of our continuum, we've got our obstruent sounds, the most constricted of our consonants. And within the obstruent group, we've got stops, affricates, and fricatives. Sonorant sounds are less constricted than obstruents. And the first type of sonorant sound we looked at were the nasal consonants. We then turn to the approximate sounds, focusing first on the liquids. Within the class of liquid sounds, we learned of two types of manner, lateral and retroflex. Finally, within the group of approximants, we learned one more manner term, glide. Okay, we've now seen videos that cover two of the three key concepts needed to describe consonant sounds in articulatory phonetics. Specifically, we're talking about place and manner of articulation. In our next video, we'll cover the third, namely voice. So stay tuned and we'll be right back.